May I uh, call Ifa uh, to the stage, please? Ifa Segal. The mic is yours. Well, toda raba. Shalom lekulam. Hi. Um, I'm very actually I'm very excited to be here, and it's uh, also my uh, first time in uh, Sweden and first time in Stockholm, and. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I took it upon myself to kind of uh, com connect, connect with communities around the world and kind of spread the message and, and, and do the little bit that I can. I think for, uh, for the challenges that I think our generation is, is facing. And uh, I want to take a few minutes to kind of explain to you how I see those challenges and how I see, first of all, this gathering and all these types of gathering happening all around the world. As, a, as an amazing first important step toward overcoming these, uh, these challenges together. And uh, I think the key, and I'll say it a few times during these next few minutes, the key is definitely unity. Unity, working together, and, uh, and uh, helping each other, understanding each other, sharing information, assisting each other, and basically this is the key to success. And so I've been doing what I, my work for about 10 years, more or less. I'm a lawyer, and I've chosen the law as a, as, a, as a means to an end. I think, you know, the role of coming and bringing everybody together is my true calling, but the law is a, is a very important tool that we have. And unlike what most people think, I think the law is definitely, 100% in most cases, actually is on our side, whether it's international law, whether it's domestic law. And, and the problem is, I think, is that our narrative, our story, has been dragged through the mud for so many years, is that, um, and it's not a coincidence, and it's not a grassroots movement like people would like to, to think or would like you to think. What happened was is that there is a, a hand really behind it all that is coordinating, orchestrating, and, and working to do this for many, many, many years. If you look at the term Zionism, for example, Zionism now is a word that I think a lot of us, unfortunately, are, are uh, shamed to be associated with, are afraid to be associated with. And this is something that uh, is now, unfortunately, has become in some places in the world a synonym for, for what? For racism, for fascism, for hatred, for violence. And what is race? What, what is Zionism? For let's let's talk about it just for a second. What is Zionism? So Zionism basically is, I think, is a romantic notion. It's not even a political notion, at least not anymore. It's a romantic notion. It's a notion that us, whether you know where are from Israel or any other place in the world, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, um, whether whatever ethnic background we have whatever culture we have, whatever political camp we're, we come from. This is just a notion to say that the Jewish people have a right to have uh, control over their safety, over their future uh, in their ancestral homeland. That's what it says. That is Zionism. That is Zionism, my friend. And Zionism doesn't talk about borders. It doesn't talk about if this Jewish entity, this Jewish state should be in this place or another. It doesn't talk about anyone else. It doesn't talk about taking anything else from anyone else. It doesn't talk about discriminating against anyone else. If anything, Zionism talks about the light to the world, about how we can come together to help the world be better, how we can share our values, how we can share equality, how we can prevent others from the atrocities that has happened in Jewish history. And that is, that is Zionism. That is why Zionism is, is really, in fact, a very wide, broad tent for anyone coming from any kind of political camp, from any kind of uh, political belief, like I said, religion, background, geography, whatever. And look at what Zionism has become. And I think it is time for us to, to stand up and kind of claim it back. Claim it back. This is what we need to do. And we need to tell our brothers and sisters that they should not be ashamed to call themselves Zionists and they should not be afraid to call themselves Zionists. And unfortunately, that's not very easy nowadays 
because anti-Semitism is on the rise, and I think in some places in the world, I, th I think we're getting closer uh, to the way things were in the first half of the 20th century than we are, than we could have ever have believed to be in, 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 in the second decade of the 21st century. And so I think this is the time, because when we are facing terrorism, and we do face terrorism, unfortunately, in Israel uh, a lot, and when we are facing uh, terrorism and violence in Jewish communities around the world, and when I go around the world and I see uh, synagogues looking like four knocks, you know, when you have sandbags and armed policemen standing outside of synagogues, and when you have in a, even American Jews nowadays, um, you know, bringing in security guards outside of their synagogues, then we, need, we understand that, that something is up and we need to wake up. But the thing is that, that the violence doesn't, was not created in a vacuum. The, va the violence was created from a very well-organized, intentional campaign to, to incite against Jews and incite against Israel and create violence and, 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 and lies, a campaign of lies and deception. And unfortunately, because we were silenced for so long, this has become almost like a, a monopoly power in the international media, sometimes in parliaments. And if we don't stand up now, and if we don't unite now, I'm afraid it's, it, it, it will become harder and harder uh, from each passing year. And so I think the challenge is really, is not the terrorism and it's not the anti-Semitism. Because basically what happens is, is that I don't think it's an, actually in and of itself an existential threat. It's painful. You know, we have rockets being fired at us and people are being stabbed and killed every day. It's not an existential threat. But you know what is an existential threat? The divide. The divide. That is an existential threat. What I've said before, when we are ashamed to call ourselves Zionists, when we are afraid to come together, when it's too scary to come to a rally for Israel, when it's too scary to come to a synagogue, when it's too scary to support a Jewish state, that is an existential threat. And so, We've created, like I told you, my means is the law. And so we've created uh, the International Legal Forum about five years ago. And I'm very, very proud to say that we now have a network of approximately 3,000 members from 30 different countries around the world. And I'm very happy and very proud to come here to Sweden, hopefully to get as many of you to come and join us and stay connected with us. And we're happy to help and we're happy to share information and uh, we're happy to work together. And I think each and every one of you that joins the network to come to an event, to share information, to bring up the most crazy ideas that you can think of. What we do is that we need to work to expose these networks for who they are. We need to expose the terrorist organizations that are behind these so-called human rights organization, how they masquerade themselves in a language that suits Western liberal values, and they've set out roots, so, you know, sometimes for decades. So it's so credible now. They receive billions of dollars in budgets each year. And this is the work that we do. We expose them for who they are. We discriminate them. We shut down the funding. And we show that they're all eventually connected together. And we had victories in the last few years. We had victories because, like I said, the law is on our side and the, and the truth is on our side. So I think this is the challenge of our generation, as I said. And if we rise to that occasion, I think we can definitely be successful and be the winners of this challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hifa. Um, I want to keep you up here for just a minute. Um, you may have seen on Facebook and in our mail outs and also in our other social media, we have a special um, gathering tomorrow night to honor the fact that first we have Hifa here in Sweden, which we're so excited about. But this is a great opportunity. So all of you here, any of you who are lawyers, Swedish lawyers, we welcome you to participate in a little gathering just to see uh, how we can start looking at this in Sweden. Because at the end of the day, Sweden is a major, major contributor economically to money that goes indirectly and sometimes you never really know because it's not clear with the receipt, 
where our Swedish tax money is going and ended up in terrorist pockets that are using terror against Jews in Israel. So it's really, really important if you are lawyers, if you have friends, family that are lawyers that are interested in helping out, um, you can sign up. Uh, there you can just say you're, it's specifically for the legal uh, network and it's tomorrow. You actually don't necessarily have to be a lawyer, just an activist who wants to get involved using these type of, of means. Um, after studying law for many years, I can tell you you don't have to actually study law for many years to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, grab a friend, grab a family member, grab a neighbor, grab a dog, I don't know, grab somebody and uh, let's sit together around the table and uh, start figuring out how we are shut, uh, how to start shutting down all this uh, financial aid uh, coming out of Sweden, unfortunately. Exactly. So Monday, that's tomorrow at 6. Um, Find me or Yifa and we'll give you more details about where and really anyone like who wants to help with this. We really need to push and the time is now. So thanks once again, Yifa. Thank you.